So now I have a value for over here, right? I'm just going to write this 142.8, blah, 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 blah. I've put this down here because it corresponds to this, right? Here's another skill, right? You use your diagrams as a tool. They're not just there to look pretty, though they should look pretty, right? They're there as a mechanism to help you solve the question, right? So now I know this. You can see from the diagram, now all I need to do is this, right? That's all that's left. And the process is exactly the same here. Talk me through it. What do I start writing? I'll give you a clue. It starts with M. In triangle BCT. Very good. So I'm naming my triangle. I've got another one over there. Okay. Because my setup is exactly the same, right? I have an angle of elevation, and I have that same, literally the same distance, 100 meters, the flagpole. Man, it's a large flagpole. Anyway, I've got tan 22, right? And I've got the same relationship. So again, you're going to get BC as the subject, 110, 22, and you're going to get out a new number. Go ahead, crunch it for me. You should get 200 and something from memory. 247, okay, now, 247, give me a few decimal places, give me three or four. 5086, dot, dot, dot. Okay, now, I'll just mention again, you'll get sick of me saying this, but hopefully that means that you really get it, right? I'm putting these calculator displays down, not because they necessarily merit marks, or not because, oh, I have to, but because I'm trying to demonstrate that I know exactly where this number came from, right? You can't fluke this number, right? You can, like, you can copy off someone's, like, you know, if they just rounded that to 143 or something like that, you can copy that off someone's sheet and not have any idea where it came from. But when you have the decimal places, it puts it beyond a shadow of a doubt that you put exactly the right thing in your calculator. So you're communicating that you understand the process, okay? Same deal, um, use your store button, right? Shift, store, chuck it in B, I guess, and you'll have the answer going into B and then you're done, okay? Now I've got my second distance that I needed, 247.5, 247.5. So you can see what we've done now, right? We transformed a problem that we didn't know how to solve, 3D tree into a problem that we do know how to solve. In fact, it's trivially easy to solve. This is just Pythagoras, okay? You know how to do Pythagoras, you've been doing it for years. Let's just tie this up in a neat bow, okay? Again, in a particular triangle, right? Because they're all right angled, so I better name what's going on. I'm after AB. So AB squared equals, let's name these guys. As 5.3 students, you always should attach geometric reasoning to what's going on. In fact, that's one of the key differences between a 5.3 and a 5.2 student. A 5.2 student can crunch through processes, but might not actually understand or be able to articulate the reasons why. So Pythagoras' is theorem, that's why this is the case. Okay? So when you go to here, right, you have a couple of choices. I'm just going to put down these like rough numbers, 142 point something. But in your calculator, all you need to do is, now to manipulate these numbers, I showed you how to recall them, right? But um, clear your display, clear it all. And because these are all alphabetical characters, you use up in the top left, alpha, right? So if you go alpha and then A, there's your character. And then you just need to square it, right? So alpha, A, squared. And you'll have A squared in your display. Then you add B, and then you square it, and you'll have a squared plus b squared in there, okay? So obviously, choose letters that are convenient to you so you don't confuse them. You should get a number at the end, right? Some big number. Someone got it for me. Say it again, Carla. 81656. And some decimal places, do you have? 61661. Okay, great. So. I'm almost there. This number is ridiculously large, right? And the reason why is because it's the distance squared, okay? So with that number still in your display, all you need to do is punch the square root button, okay? Now, I already worked this one out, so I've got 285 point, okay? Now, I'm pretty much done, aren't I? With one exception. Read carefully. That was the very first tip that I gave you. Wake up, wake up. There we go. What do I need to do? 
I have some approximation to do, right? And you will notice I have waited all the way to the very end to approximate. What would have happened if I had, for instance, approximated here or here? What effect would that have had? Anyone? Yeah, Chris. You might have changed the line. Yeah, exactly right. Every time you introduce like a little bit of deviation, it'll only be at point 0.2 here or 0.5 there. But don't forget, you're squaring those numbers. Any errors you introduce, they tend to inflate. And what you're going to end up with at the bottom, it's going to be different. Okay. So now at the very end, this and only this is what I approximate. I do um, a squiggly equals sign, though you can just as easily do this. The reason I don't do that is because when I'm in an exam and in a hurry, my dots look like, well, they look like this. So I don't do dots, okay? Squiggly lines, hard to screw those up. So that means approximately equals to 2, 8, 6, and you should say the units that you're approximating to. Happy times.